Hello viewers, welcome to the next video in the tutorial series for E framework. In this tutorial, we are going to discuss about databases. I would be using MySQL database in this tutorial. So I'm assuming that you know how to interact in PHP with MySQL database. Okay, moving ahead, let's talk about how we can create a database connection. So E provides a component called connection which actually represents a connection to the database via PDO where PDO is a PHP extension which exposes an interface to access the database okay now there are two ways in which you can make a connection you can instantiate this connection class right and pass the configuration to it and another way is you can configure that in the application configuration so let's see how we can do that in both the ways so moving ahead to the example okay so here right now this is the configuration file right db.php which we have included in web.php over here right so in db.php we are just passing the class so the class is this connection component this is dsn data source name so we are using mysql right so mysql host is equals to localhost db name is test so i have a test database okay username is root this is the password and this is the care set right so we are including this uh, configuration over here in web.php and then here we are saying that include this configuration in the application okay so so this is one way of doing the configuration for the database right so in the test controller i have created an action called action db and here i am just printing the database connection instance Okay, so let's see the output on the browser. So I'm just focusing on these lines right now. Just comment it. Okay, so it would be it would be test slash db. Okay, so this is the connection object. So DSN is what we have passed in the configuration username is root password is abc123 and these are other attributes other properties related to the connection object okay moving ahead let's talk about another way of making the connection so i'm just commenting this code and i am uncommenting this part okay so here we are instantiating the connection component and we are passing the configuration the same configuration actually which we have in the db.php okay so i'm just printing this connection object now on the browser so the same thing so this is so this is how you can make the connections to the database in two ways okay moving ahead let's talk about database access objects so e framework provides an object oriented api which is built on top of pdo i have already uh, discussed about pdo right pdo is an X php extension which exposes an interface to access the database right so e provides an object oriented database api built on top of pdo for accessing the relational database so in this uh, when we are using actually DAO we just have to deal with the plain SQLs. So the plain SQLs that you normally write in MySQL right and the PHP arrays. So because of this it is the most efficient way of accessing the database in terms of performance. So there are other ways like which we, will disc which we discuss in the uh, further, tutorial, further tutorials like uh, query builder or active record right so there are other ways of accessing the database as well but this one is the most efficient 
okay so moving ahead let's talk about writing the queries so let's say you have to make make a connect you have made, already made the connection to the database right and now you want to fetch some result from the database so what are the steps that you need to follow so you need to create an instance of command object with a plain query i would show you the example then you have to bind the parameters and then you have to call the appropriate execution methods so actually there are different methods which which are there to get result sets in different ways so what are type what are what are those methods so the methods are query all in which you get all the records query one in which you would just get the single record query column so when the result set is returned you are just getting the first column right and then query scalar so normally we use it when we are writing the count query so there is a there is a value right which you want to return so in that cases you are normally using query scalar and the query function this actually returns an instance of data reader using which you can then access the records in the result set okay so now let's see the example for it so here i have created a query controller okay and then i have written an action for each of the methods that we discussed just now so the first one is action all so this is the test database and i have created a table called tbl underscore client right and uh, these are the columns in that name email and status and this is the data which i have manually entered so name email and status okay so the first function that we are going to test is query all so what we discussed in the slide is that first we have to create the instance of command object with a plain query okay so here we are creating the command object with the plain query so i am just saying select star from tbl underscore client so it returns me an instance of command object and then i am calling query all function what it would do it would return me all the results that are there in this table so let's test it out on the browser okay so here i would say query slash all okay so we have two records in the database right so here we are getting the two records from the database okay next one is query one so here we are creating the command object this is the plain query so i am getting the result from tbl client table where id is equals to 1 and then i am calling the query 1 function on on top of it so it would just return me the result set with result with uh, id equal to 1 so now let's test it on browser okay so it, it's returning me the result id equal to 1 name is harry potter email is abc at gmail.com and status is active so this is the single record that we are fetching from the database okay next one is action column so here we are just writing this plain query and then we are calling the query column function so now let's see the result on the browser so we are just getting the value of the first column which is id so id is one so that's why we are getting this result okay let's say if i do here uh, two it should be two now see so this is the id okay moving ahead next function which is scalar query scalar right so we are just writing the plain query over here so select count star from tbl count so give me the count of records that are there in this table right and we are just then calling query scalar so now let's see the output 
okay scalar okay so the count is 2 we have two records right so it's returning the value of the count to us okay moving ahead the last one is query right so we have discussed that it would return an instance of data reader right so let's so i'm just printing out the result means the data reader object and then we are iterating over this result with the read function so we are just reading each row in the result set and then i am printing that row over here so now let's check the output on the browser okay so it's index right so query index so this is the data reader object right this is the statement that we have passed okay and these 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 are the rows so this this is the first row and this is the second one so this is how you can use these functions to fetch the data from the database okay i have made one more change so we are getting the data reader over here right now i am passing this data reader to this view and then rendering the result so this is the file which i have created so we are just showing the client's information so these are the column headings and here now we are reading the result so we have fetched the first row and then echo all the column values and the next row okay so now let's see the output on the browser okay so this is the output that we are getting on the browser id 1 name harry potter email this and status is active similarly the second one so this is how you can pass the 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 result set that you have got to the view and then show the desired output as per your requirement i hope this tutorial is useful to you in case you have any questions you can post them in the comment section or you can drop an email to us at info at ushainformatic.com please don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more such videos thank you very much